already in shape some must for recovery and muscle growth. It is commonly assumed that training and protein shakes go hand in hand. But is there any magic in protein shakes? If you want to see a video where I talk about supplements more broadly, do so by clicking this little i button. In this video, I will talk more specifically about supplementing with protein. We will discuss whether protein supplements have any advantages compared to protein sources from whole foods, when you can benefit from supplementing with protein, and how to choose protein powder if you decide to incorporate shakes in your diet. Protein shakes, do you need them? Short answer is no, if you have a sufficient amount of protein coming from good sources at right times. To better understand this, we need to talk about three things. Quantity, quality, and frequency of protein intake. How much protein is enough? If you're regularly training at the gym and your goal is to build or retain muscle mass, consuming between 1.6 grams and 2.6 grams of protein per kilo of body mass has shown to be beneficial in achieving this goal. For instance, I currently weigh 67 kilos or 148 pounds for the Americans. So my daily protein target ranges between 107 and 174 grams. But more protein above your requirements does not mean more muscle mass. Any protein you consume on top of what your body needs will either be excreted from your body as waste or stored as fat. Additionally, consistent overconsumption of protein is associated with serious health problems including increased cardiovascular disease and liver disease risks. So what does this mean for you? Step one, figure out your daily protein target. Step two, track your food intake to calculate how much protein you actually consume each day. And step three, assess whether you're meeting your daily protein requirements. If you realize that you're not hitting your protein targets, consider whether you could up your protein by eating more protein-rich food or whether you would want to consider supplementing with protein shakes. Apart from the total daily intake, per meal protein quantity and daily frequency of protein ingestion also plays an important role in preserving muscle mass and function. It is estimated that consumption of 3 to 4 meals a day, each containing 25 to 40 grams of high quality protein, is optimal for the stimulation of protein synthesis. So if you decide to take protein shake, choose a time for your protein shake, which is three to four hours apart from your other protein rich meals. I don't believe in this pre and post because it's all a bunch of nonsense. Now let's talk about quality of protein. From the standpoint of protein quality, protein powders have no real advantage over complete proteins from whole food sources. Animal sourced proteins such as milk, eggs, meat and fish are called complete proteins as they include all essential amino acids. If you already consume enough of these in your diet, you most likely don't need to worry about supplementing. If your diet mainly consists of plant foods and you decide to supplement with protein powders, you would want to be more strategic in choosing your protein powder based on its amino acid profile. Most plant foods, including beans, nuts and grain sources, are incomplete proteins, meaning they lack at least one essential amino acid or have insufficient amounts of certain amino acids to fulfill your daily requirements. Incomplete proteins can complement one another, so you don't have to worry about consuming complete proteins at every meal intake. There is one amino acid that is particularly important for muscle growth, leucine. Leucine plays a critical role in stimulating muscle protein synthesis and in combination with other amino acids, it promotes muscle growth and recovery. It appears that a leucine dose of two to three grams maximizes protein synthesis. Amongst good quality protein rich foods like meats and dairy, this coincides with an individual protein serve of 20 to 25 grams of protein. You don't have to rely on a protein shake for leucine. So when can protein shakes be helpful? Protein shakes can be convenient, but from the protein quality standpoint, they have no real advantage over whole foods. There are four real reasons why protein shakes can be helpful. Reason number one, easy calories quickly. This is particularly helpful in your building phase, 
when you can't be bothered eating fifth meal, so you just drink those calories. Reason number two, macro adjustments. With protein shakes, you can ensure that you hit the protein target without consuming extra carbs and fats. This can be helpful when you're cutting, but wanna maintain muscle mass. Reason number three, it can be a cost-effective way of increasing your protein intake. And finally, reason number four, you like them. You wanna have a protein shake because you like the taste and it helps you get in that zone, go for your life. But despite all of the upsides, you still have to remember that protein powder is a supplement. No protein shake will substitute a balanced diet. So I wouldn't recommend taking protein shakes more than once a day. You need balanced diet, come on and try it. So now you're in a store, how to choose protein powder. First and foremost, as discussed, the most important consideration is the amino acid profile of protein powder. I've already talked about considerations relevant to choosing the type of protein. I personally prefer whey as it's one of the most researched supplements and I find it easy to digest. However, if you're lactose intolerant, you may consider plant protein powders as well. Opt for a product that has its amino acid profile printed on the package. If the amino acid profile is missing, this can be a sign that the manufacturer is trying to hide something. So no amino acid profile, move on. Next thing is calorie content. How many grams of protein, fats and carbs there are per serve can also reflect the quality of the supplement. There are three different types of protein powders. Protein concentrates typically supply 60 to 80 percent protein with remaining 20 to 40 percent comprised of fats and carbs. Protein isolates containing about 90 to 95 percent of protein and hydroprotein. Similar protein content to isolates but is absorbed more quickly by your body and muscles. Protein concentrate might be a good option for you if you're taking a protein shake after a workout and say you're in your building phase as having this shake would help you hit your calories for the day and help you refuel with carbs after training. However, if you're dieting and would prefer protein without additional carbs, protein isolate would suit you better. Hydroprotein is kind of fancy and more expensive, so it's up to you to decide whether you wanna pay extra for promises of marginal benefits. And it's worth saying that general supplement recommendations also apply to protein shakes. Have a look where the ingredients are from and where the powder was manufactured. The rule of thumb is that the shorter supply chain is usually better. The longer supply chain means that there are more things that can go wrong. An important thing to check is that the product has trustworthy third-party certifiers. You frequently see labels like high quality, 100% pure, says who. Last but not least, make sure that you like the taste of the product and that it agrees with your stomach, as some people might feel bloated or gassy after certain protein powders. If you're buying a certain brand for the first time, try to get testers first or buy a small pack instead of committing and trying a large jar of something you're not gonna use. Read it, Paul, and fulfill your destiny. A quick note on protein bars. Not great. A protein bar is an overpriced treat and is usually not a good source of protein. Compared to protein shake, they tend to have a poor amino acid profile and have a substantially higher carbs and fats content, typically packed with saturated fat, sugars, or artificial sweeteners. It's okay to have a protein bar as a treat, but you may as well have Snickers bar similar calories at a cheaper price. So that's kind of it. Leave me a comment, say hello, share this video with your fellow gym goers, your family, your friends, men on the street, fucking anyone, just share it. If you found this video helpful, please click like and subscribe to my channel. Eat your protein and lift weights. See you next time. Mwah. I'm not even saying anything bad this time. <laughs> I'm not pissing anyone off. Sometimes you're okay. Sometimes you see Rick, I lost my spice. <laughs> it went to my nose. Да что ж такое? Based on its amino acid profile. Man, I'm yelling now. Oh my god, that was close. <laughs> You didn't expect that, did you? <laughs>